hand and somebody intercepted them. I say, who is this? You don't know. Somebody intercepted them, beefed them up, put them back on the plane, sent them back. You know, God says, you're going to give back what they try to give you. And uh, I said, and then what happened? He says, I don't know. You don't know who it was? I said, till today, I don't know who it was. But the hotel did say, tell me that they would never talk to, you know, they would never call me again. And they never did. Um, and I just accepted it. I didn't even question it till today. I don't know what happened. Um, Praise God. And they never call me again, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this other hotel, uh, they wasn't standing for any of that stuff. They assigned it to a murder for hire guy over here. I was eating, uh, I was fellowshipping in a restaurant with a bunch of Christian businessmen. So we're sitting around talking and the waitress comes over to me, she says, then there's somebody waiting in the bar for you. He, he wants you to come over and talk to him. I said, okay, I go over there and the bar was closed, so it was really dark in there. This dark figure is sitting by this table. So I sit down, he says, hey, you know how much you owe, huh? Yeah. You got film this week. I said, I ain't got it. He said, I don't care, you better find it. So it's over for you. So I said, listen. <laughs> I gave my life to the Lord. He runs my whole life. Whatever he wants to do with it is fine. And he, he gets taken aback. And he says, I, I, I know about God. I said, you do? He says, I went to Christian college. This guy was an ex-policeman. Became a strong arm man, got into a lot, a lot of trouble, and started uh, being a collector, a real serious type collector that they've used for other jobs. And uh, he says, he, after that, he, he didn't know what to say to me, but he just got up and said, tell God to get you the money, and he left. I had a really good friend. He was a former police officer also. He, he was a strong arm collector. He went through all the same things, but he also got saved and became a deacon to a church in Neville Beach. And uh, he called me one day. He said, you know, Stan, I went to talk to this guy to lay, lay off on you, but they said he couldn't. This guy said he couldn't because next week he's getting indicted on the murder for hire charge. So he needed the money for his wife. So I said, how much is the uh, price of my head? He said, 5,000. 5,000? Oh, what an insult. Uh, that, must be, that must be small potatoes. <laughs> so anyway, um, I said, well, no words. The Lord gave me a scripture to... to to hang my life on, and it was from Second Chronicles uh, 20, 15, and 17. It says, do not fear, do not be dismayed, the battle is his. Just stand and watch the salvation of the Lord. And I said, you know, I I'm still have this little fear inside of me, but those scriptures really help me. So the guy says, oh, good, but I'm still concerned. I said, okay. A few days later, he calls me up, and he said, oh, Stan, the wonderful God here we have. Because he said he needed it because he was going to go through a trial that he, he was ready to give up on God, but now he's encouraged to stand in there again. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you didn't hear? I said, no. He says, hey, the guy went down to kill all of base and he's trying to uh, collect another debt and the guy blew his head off. I said, huh? <laughs> he blew his head off. I said, well, he was trying to kill me, so God killed him again. There's a scripture I hung on to from day one. It says in Proverbs 16, 7, that if your ways are pleasing to, to him, if you seek his righteousness, he will have all your enemies be at peace with you. And I hung on to that. He'll have all our enemies be at peace with, with us. One way or another. <laughs> I have a friend, a mentor, who, who was with me from day one till today. He always keeps this little picture of the guy on the ground that killed all of these and he keeps it in his Bible so that any time I get weak he just pulls it out and says, huh? huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes it, it took me a while to talk about this story because you know it's kind of touchy and uh, then I used to share at great commission meetings and all that and they would tell everybody shh. I said no no the Lord said it's okay. <laughs> but um, those are serious situations. You know, and even in the world of business, um, <clears throat> I had an account at this bank. I had accounts all over. 
God's ways are infinite. All these accountants, hotels, this, um, banks, finance companies, whatever, he, his ways are so infinite. He never had to use do this, anything the same way twice. Every single one was handled differently. He was testing me to see what I would do. He was training me to do things the way he wanted to. I had to change my whole life. Um, I was always vice president, president, uh, you know, guy in charge, uh, co development coordinator, all that kind of stuff. So I come to the Lord and, you know, I don't have a job, so I have to apply for I applied for so many jobs. Everyone told me, you're the most qualified for the position. I'm sure we're going to hire you. And nobody called me. No matter how many I applied, nobody called. I knew it was the Lord because how could they not hire me? I was so, you know, I had all that experience. And uh, <clears throat> so I had to humble myself. I had to go work at flea markets. I had to deliver cookies for ten dollars a trip. I had to I was sweeping warehouses for five dollars an hour. But in everything I did, God used me to and he, he had me totally serve him. I, I was at this warehouse sweeping the warehouse for five dollars an hour. And then one day the boss calls me and it was foreign import tiles and all this other fancy rich stuff. And he calls me in and he says, Stan, what are you doing here? I said, what? I'm cleaning your warehouse. He says, I just found out who you were. He says, what are you doing here? So I began to share with him about the Lord. And he starts to weep and cry. And he says, you know, Stan, I know God sent you here because you see that big Cadillac out there. You see that house on the hill of mine. I'm going to lose it all. And my wife's been trying to get me to church, and I just didn't want to listen. But now, listening to you, I know God is telling me to get my Okole in church. And, I, <laughs> and it was all like that at the flea market. I don't know how many merchants we took in and led them to the Lord, prayed for healing, got them healed, everything, you know. Um, everything I did had a purpose for God. But He wanted to change my thinking. And he, he, I had to go through this humbling process of being a nobody like I am today, nobody. <laughs> so I had to, everything, so, but we were having fun. My wife and I were just having the grace. I don't know why my wife hung in there all this time. We were going through all that, but she did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, so I, I changed my whole approach to life. He says, I'm going to teach you how to live. How are you going to hear my voice? How everything you do is going to be through my spirit. Either he's going to speak to me verbally, he's going to lead me to by my spirit, he's going to lead me by words in the word and the word of God, which he did so many times, and it was all those you know he was just teaching me a new way of life that I was about to teach other people, and then uh, <clears throat> you know so I, I had to change my pro. I walked into this one bank that was run by my good friend, and I. I I used to sit down at his desk all the time and I would keep telling him about Jesus. You know, bankers are the hardest guys to convince. <laughs> Their whole lives are 